my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It is the next block on our table topper sew along. We're doing a sampler using a block from each of the quilts in the book, plus a few bonus blocks. I'm using my birdsong fabric, plus some solids, because I just wanted to sort of punch up the color with a group of solids, and it's been really, really fun so far. So we are on the quilt today that's called Life is a Picnic. It's on page 11 of the book. And so here is the picture of it. Uh, see, it's got, it's got the s'mores on the table all ready to go out to the fire pit. <laughs> okay, so here's the block. My block, and I'm going to show you the quilt in a second. So uh, I'm so excited about this. I'm going to walk you through doing uh, the the colors on it plus show you foundation papers that you might want to use if you have those so here's the quote from the book ta-da so ah I really love this one I love the peach and the gray and that green that whole color combo here is what I have on the backing which is one of the better wide backs uh, really love it love it love it it's got it's gray so i thought it went really well with the star points this is also the block that i used to make the quilt that i'll be giving away when we hit 85,000 subscribers here at youtube so my youtube channel to subscribe at youtube is totally free it just means that you are following they use the word to subscribe to mean that you are following so that you can get a notice when i have the new video um, you can find the videos ease my video channel easily and this is the quilt i'll be giving away when we get is it right side here gotta get it right side up <laughs> <laughs> when we hit 85,000, which is only about a thousand more people, just a thousand more people. So if you are watching, but you have not subscribed, be sure you do that. If you have friends who are quilters that you think will enjoy what I do, or heck, if they just even watch it sometimes, it's worth subscribing because I am going to be giving away at 85,000, 90,000, 95,000, and 102. We gotta get right over that 100,000. And so I have four quilts that I'm still giving away till we get to that point. All right, let's go and look at making this block on the other side. The block for Life's a Picnic is one of my favorites. It gives an illusion of floating because of the way that one background piece is on all the four corners. So let's take a look at the original first. So the original has two colorations. It's got the peach and the green. Uh, there are the same dark gray. So that star just really is solid. You really see it. You do not lose that star at all in the block. In the center, there's a square and then a surround. And so that's very subtle. Some of them have a little bit stronger because that's, that's, uh, that's almost a solid uh, there. But they're not um, a super strong center on this particular one. They're not like popping off of there. Uh, and then the gingham is used, this particular quilt, this, there's a gingham, green or peach, to give that illusion behind the block. So it makes it have sort of a dimension. So to use just to do just one block and to use um, one fabric line and a solid, I'm going to take the pink solid and use it for the start points because that will definitely show I'm not going to lose them. They won't fade away. In the middle, I am going to use the print that has the bird, and I think I can get most of the bird fussy cut into <clears throat> one of the sides. Then I will put a green dot. So I'm doing a much stronger center on mine. I'm going to use a pop of the green. And now for behind, for the where the gingham is here, I have a couple options. I could go with this, which is, um, you know, sort of a white with a tonal. My background for this will be either the pink or actually I could even do the background as the dots. Put it, put it on the dots. Oh, that would be kind of cool. The other thing would be I could use the dots as this piece here and then it, use the white. I'm trying to use some, some of these as um, you know the the background so i'm not using so much as the light as the background i'm experimenting and having fun with different kinds of backgrounds here's another way i could do it i could use this as the background for the block and then put this pink uh, for like the shadow and there's the star points and this is another one that could be this the shadow i could use the stripe 
and it would definitely show up against that being the background of the block, which is kind of neat. I kind of like that. This or this, I think this one. Yeah, because this is, this is starting to meld a little bit too much into the pink. So this is what I'll do. Background, star point, center, and then this is the shadow. Now, if you want, these are flying geese units, and if you happen to have papers to do flying geese, this is a great block to try that on or use it on. Uh, these papers are from the Fat Quarter Shop. They're so Emma publication. They come in all different sizes. This is the size of the finished. It's three by six finished, and you make two at a time. So there's there are instructions here that tell you how to do it, what sizes to cut, and then you're going to actually use this whole sheet and make two flying geese units at a time. And I think I will do that because that's a lot of fun. I haven't done that for a while. When you use any of these papers from the Fat Quarter Shop, they're so Emma publication, they have a full video that shows you what to do. But I'm just going to cover just the components that you'll use and uh, then you can go watch the video. Afterwards, I'm just going to pull the paper off and talk a little bit more about it. So first, let's take a look here. On the paper, they always give you the size with the seam allowance and then the size without the seam allowance, which is the finished size. I talked about the, the other day on a video, unfinished size, finished size. Also, real big is the finished size. This is what size it'll be in the quilt. Then within the pattern booklet here of the papers, uh, this sheet gives you the direction step by step, and then you can go to the Fat Quarter Shop's YouTube channel and see how they, uh, Kimberly walks you through it. So you're basically going to have uh, some rectangle. They're just a they're the, just a little bit bigger than a rectangle. If they're a little bigger than the size, like I had one that's a little, it's got still some seam allowance uh, selvage on here. I just left it. Uh, then you'll have some squares, two two squares for each. Uh, the block. So I'm going to be doing two of these. This one, and then I'll pull another one out because I need four of these to do the star points for the block, for the picnic block. So I will be having two and one, and two and one. Now she does use a ruler to do some pressing of the lines and cutting, and then also a glue stick or some liquid glue. So those are the other things to get started. All of these are cut in half. So she has you uh, do that first thing. Where's my ruler? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those for one set and cut the other for one set. And then after I sew it, I'll talk a little bit more when I'm taking the paper off because uh, who doesn't like to watch somebody take paper off foundation, right? <laughs> When using the foundation papers, now you have something that looks like this, and I will cut it. I'll show you. Kimberly's video shows you this also, but I thought I would just do it with you because I have to do it anyway. Uh, it is on the solid lines. When you're cutting, you are cutting always on the solid lines, not the dotted lines. So she recommends, which I think is a good idea, that you cut the square first. So you'll cut on the solid line and remove all of this extra. It's a great way I actually got my rotating cutting mat out. Could have just done that. Oh well, whoops. Okay, all four sides. And then after that, you will cut the two flying geese units apart and then we'll remove paper from one of them so you can see. And this paper is a little bit thinner than like your paper you're putting in your printer. So, okay, so now we have to cut on, it says trim on this line, trim on this line. And so that's what you do. And this will be the flying gauge unit needed with seam allowance. So the seam allowance is included. There we go. And the other one. And then after that, you're just going to gently remove the paper. So this paper, because it is really a nice weight, it comes off very easily. It's the, your stitches have perforated uh, that that uh, tear line, and so they come off super nice. And once again, the middle. So here is the star point. So it'll be like this. This is the points of the star, and this is the uh, the background. 
So I'm going to go ahead and finish the block. I'm really happy about this print as the background. It would look beautiful with the white as well, but I really am trying to mix it up and play around with the fabric some for this sew along. So I don't want to do the predictable cream on the background of all the blocks. I'm trying to use some of the others. So let's put it up here, there. Oh, see now it's doing exactly what I hoped. I'm getting that sort of alternating color. I've got pink in the middle, pink on, in the middle on each side, and then top and bottom will be blue, and then I'll be alternating uh, on the top, working it so that it also is balanced pink and blue. So that will be so fun. It's in, and it's got the green. The green is sprinkled in, and now the yellow is sprinkled in as well with that solid. All right, we have a few more things. Today is Care Bear Day. So I thought it'd be fun if you have a quilt with a bear on it or a quilt that has bear fabric. Years ago, there was a bear fabric that like everybody made something with. And I know I made something with it years ago, but I don't have that anymore to show you. <laughs> So I'm sure some of you still have a bear quilt um, or two that you can share in the community quilt along with Pat Sloan. Um, also, because today there's a blog post, there is a share at the bottom of that. So you can put it there if you're not on Facebook, but you should come to Facebook because it's a lot of fun. Okay, I have a few um, goodies to share with you and we're going to remind you that our ambassador Kendall is doing videos for my um, Block Wednesday, so Hometown Charms. He did a video about building the house, so you want to be sure you check that out. I did link it on Wednesday's um, post, but in case you missed that. Okay, I have a few goodies to share because I was ordering some things and I thought, I want to find some B stuff. And so I found a couple of B fabrics. <clears throat> These are so cute. This one is the Honey Bee. Isn't that pretty? And then the other one is called Queen Bee. Yeah, they're both, you know, the, the, the line has other fabrics in it, but I ended up just getting the, whoops, upside down. I just getting these pieces because I wanted some text print with bees and I don't know, I had had a thought and I thought I'm just need something like that for down the road, you know, just in case. And then while I was there, I saw Heather Ross's, um, this is like, it's, it's not really bug jars. There's like there's like tadpoles in it. So it's like tadpoles and little frogs and little flowers in the jars. I was having a yellow moment, I guess, when I was ordering that day because <laughs> they're all yellow. And I got this. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Look at that. So cute. Now, I was showing you the flying geese. They also come in some other sizes. Um, this is one that they, brand new size that they came out with. And then there's also some new sizes of the square and the square foundations from So Emma, which is Fat Quarter Shop's publication. So those are all available now. I have the link below and at my website to all the foundations that they make. They make quite a few. So sometimes, I, th I think they did a sampler once with the foundations. That might be fun to do sometime, but you have to have them in order to do that. So it's like, I've, that's why I haven't done it yet. They also came out with two other patterns at the Fat Quarter Shop. Marcella, isn't this pretty? But here, there actually is, they have a kit for this one that is using, um, I think it's Christmas fabric, or at least it's Christmas feel, that kind of cranberry red and green. Isn't it gorgeous? Beautiful. And then if you like the typeface series that they're doing at the Fat Quarter Shop, here's one for St. Nick, Santa Claus, and Kris Kringle. All the ways that you say Santa across the world. I'm sure there's a ton more, but here is some of them. So darling. So, so darling. And remember, the Oliso Iron is on sale this week. It's 15% uh, off for the large one. Here, I've got mine over sitting over here so this size and that so it's a really good deal so I hope if you've been looking at it and you want to get one you will you will do that and you can it's uh, on sale 15% off through next Wednesday so be sure you check that out okay for our block here we go did you see how I got the bird in there I don't think I mentioned that wait I don't think I showed you close there 
You see, I cut, it was able to get her in there. Mostly I didn't have to chop off too much. Just a little bit top of the wing. I could have actually fussy cut another one down here, but I decided one was good for this, that that just sort of made it. Um, so I'm, re I'm really, really excited to see your blocks. I probably should have you um, share some groupings and then maybe one day soon I will do a little um, quilt show of some of the groupings of your blocks because a couple of you have done that and they just look super fantastic. All right, after next week, uh, when we hit next, after, at next Friday, we'll do the third one <clears throat> on this side, and then we'll be able to sew that whole middle section, and that will be really nice. I love being able to sew it as we go. All right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.